Good morning. It's good to have all of you here today, and you notice that we have a wonderful baptismal party here, too. It's good to have you here as Laker is baptized. Um, just a few announcements before we begin. Um, the flooring project um, is starting this weekend, so that means that a few things are going to change for a while. Beginning on Monday, September 2nd, all ministry teams, the adult choir, the contemporary team, the council, and Sunday school teachers, please use the west door by the narthex to enter for your meetings. And that would be the door right back this way. So please remember that that's the only way that we can get in and come out. So I guess if you find a door that's locked, that means that you're at the wrong door. <laughs> so anyway, just be watching for that. Um, at this point then, I have no other announcements. So let us begin our, our worship together. Our gathering song is God is Here, the red hymnal, ELW 526. Please stand if you were able.
please take out your ELW, uh, which is toward the front of the, pa um, of the front of the book, page 94, and we will join together with our confession and forgiveness. Please respond with the bold prince. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us now silently confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, Forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the Son of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Kyrie is found on the front of the hymnal, 184. Please join me in the prayer of the day. O 
God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and at this time I'd invite the baptismal party to come forward around the font. Baptism is an action of God. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and given eternal life. Baptism liberates us from sin and death by joining us to Jesus Christ. You have presented Laker James for baptism. Will you now share Christ's love with him by your words and your actions? Will you treasure him as a special gift from God and care for him with the love of Christ? Will you pray for him that God's presence fills his life? Will you teach him how much Jesus loves him? Will you teach him that he is a child of God forever? Will you bring him to the gathering of God's people so that he grows up worshiping and praising God? Will you teach him to pray? Introduce him to the scriptures and see that he is given every opportunity to grow in Christ. I ask you to publicly take a stand for Jesus Christ. Do you renounce the forces of evil, the devil, and his empty promises? And congregation, you may join with us. Do you believe in God, our creator, savior, and counselor? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay. Laker James, I baptize you in the name of the Father, And of the sun. You're a pretty active guy. And the Holy Spirit. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to a new life through this holy sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon Laker James, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Laker, you are marked with the sign of the cross of Christ forever. And would you like to go get that lighted? Right. Pass it on down. <laughs> this baptismal candle has significance in the fact that it is um, made by people here in the congregation. And so you will always remember when Laker has his baptismal birthday that this is from Good Shepherd Lutheran. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their child. 
Strengthen them in their own baptism so they may share eternally with their child and the salvation of you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Members of Good Shepherd, you have witnessed the baptism of Laker James. Will you now pray for him and share your faith with him? Will you remind him that he belongs to Christ and that as Christ's people, we all belong to each other? Then welcome your new brother in the name of Jesus. Laker James, you are a child of God with us. Together we belong to Christ and together we belong to Christ and serve him. We welcome you into the Lord's family, into Good Shepherd's congregation, and into our hearts and lives. Amen. We do have a few gifts for you from the congregation. One would be this baptismal um, banner that has been made by a person in our congregation. And it says, Laker James, Child of God. And in case you ever forget which was his birthday or the church, it's 9-1-2013. And we also have this shell that reminds you that he is a child of God. And then someone that is not with Laker, would you like to hold this? You can hold that and as, as soon as we get ready to go back, then you can blow it out, okay? And I have been given permission that I get to show Laker off to you. You're sleeping, huh? Oh, now you opened your eyes. Laker, this is your new family. <laughs> He's very bright eyed. <laughs> I suppose mom will want you back, huh? But you fit pretty well right in my arms. Yeah. I think you might be going to sleep. <laughs> Who gets him back? Okay, you can go have your seats now. Uh -huh. Scripture will be read by Diane Lidke. first lesson is from Proverbs 25, verses 6 and 7. The book of Proverbs is a part of a collection of writings known as wisdom literature. Wisdom literature gave directions to Israel's leaders and people for the conduct of daily life. Today's reading is about humility. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here than to be put lower in the presence of a noble, what your eyes have seen. The second lesson is from Hebrews 13, verses 1 through 8 and 15 through 16. The conclusion of the letter to the Hebrews contain, contains suggestions for the conduct of a holy life, all of which are shaped by God's love toward us in Jesus Christ. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. 
Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Here ends the lessons. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 14. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you were invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not, do not sit down at the place of honor. And just in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host, and the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But, when you are invited, go and sit down when you, at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited them, inv invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or even the rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous this is the gospel of our lord please be seated well once again we find that jesus is doing something on the sabbath he has been invited to share a meal at the home of a Pharisee. Perhaps it's a setup. Are they trying to trap Jesus? We remember from other readings in Luke that Jesus can be an upsetting and sometimes difficult guest. And on a good day, Jesus' relationships with the Pharisees are antagonistic. Today, Jesus has been invited to a nice religious man's home for a dinner. And then it happens. Jesus questions the appropriate etiquette at a banquet. And now we are not taking now we are not talking about table manners and which fork that we are supposed to use. But Jesus launches an attack on the seating arrangements and who has actually been invited. And then we hear these words. He told them a parable. That word parable finds us squirming in our seats for we know we are about to hear a story that will point out how those present with him are to change their ways. And at the same time, Jesus encounters each one of us in this parable that we are to change. 
And we know how difficult it can sometimes be to have to change. So Jesus questions, why are all of you people trying to be so important? Why are you so anxious to be seated at the head of the table? Now the guests are a little bit embarrassed by his outburst, especially the ones who had chosen the places of honor. And then Jesus interrupts the nervous coughs and laughs with, all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves, they are the ones who will be exalted. The behavior Jesus exposes mirrors what we see in our world today. Yes, even in our religious circles. We observe jockeying for power all around us whether it be in churches or businesses, perhaps it's in organizations, and yes, in our families. But here Jesus tells us honor isn't gained by seizing prominence. Instead, it is humility, authentic humility, that is appropriate ban ban banquet etiquette that brings honor. Humility is not actually our human nature. Leonard Bernstein, the late conductor of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra, was once asked to name the most difficult instrument to play. Are any of you mus musicians? Do you have a favorite instrument? Well, without hesitation, he replied, it's the second violin. I can get all kinds of first violinists, but to find someone who can play second fiddle with enthusiasm, now that's a problem. And if we have no second fiddle, we have no harmony. Friends, we cannot all sit in the first chair and have God's ministry happen. Jesus suggests that one is not better or more important than the other. The loud voices are not necessarily speaking what Jesus wants. Instead, we are to all work together. Jesus challenges us to level our playing field. Christianity is not about one-upmanship. So there really is no first chair in our church. Then Jesus turns and confuses the host with some questions. So why do you choose to invite only friends, relatives, and rich neighbors that can return the invitation in the future? Why didn't you invite some of my friends to sit at the head table? You know, the homeless, the beggars outside of town, the widows with no family, and the street kids. So yes, we see that Jesus does have a different style of etiquette. So why is this parable so unsettling for us? Is it because Jesus puts us right beside the Pharisees to hear this parable? Is it because he is talking about how we draw these imaginary circles to keep some people out while elevating others? This parable asks us to be humble. Humble in the truest sense of the word. Not just one of those false airs of modesty. Jesus tells us to reach out and include people that we don't ordinarily rub shoulders with. Jesus is all about changing, changing things, and upsetting our status quo. And I think that is where we get a little nervous, because we like things just the way they are, comfortable, 
But Jesus says nothing about getting comfortable. We think of a church as a time and a place when we get close to Jesus, to touch base with what we've always believed, to reassure ourselves that we've got things right. And then Jesus speaks up. You see, Jesus' ways are different than ours. There is a gap between the etiquette that Jesus uses for a banquet and what we feel might be more appropriate. Those people of status we want to get close to, Jesus questions, why are they so important? Those we exclude from the church, intentionally or unintentionally, Jesus invites them to a great banquet. If we follow Jesus' voice, we reach out to others to invite all people to be part of our banquet. We cannot ignore the command. Discipleship is not a goal, but it is simply what Jesus tells us to do. Jesus did not say, make disciples of all people if they fit into your crowd. He simply says, all people. This church is the church of Jesus Christ. He is the head and we are the body. This is not a club where we set up membership rules in the midst of our good friends. Jesus invites all of, all of us to his house. That's how we got here in the first place. Yes, we are outcasts. We are sinners who have been invited. We are here because Jesus loves each one of us. And together, to be with his people, his disciples. Jesus invites not only us, but others who aren't here yet. They are waiting to have us invite them to come and hear about Jesus. And we might be surprised by those that, who are yet to come. There was a large inner city congregation that established a soup kitchen to serve the homeless and the destitute people in their part of the city. Many, many flocked to the church daily in order to survive. Over time, they become quite comfortable in the church building, and a few actually began to worship with the congregation. Then one day, a member of the congregation took the pastor aside and suggested that they might want to hold one of those special little worship services just for those people. And the pastor paused and said, Well, I think everybody should have a chance to meet Jesus face to face. Oh, of course, continued that member. Everybody should have a chance to meet Jesus. That's why I think those people should have the same opportunities that we do. The pastor quickly shot back. Oh, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. We never know where we are going to find Jesus. And this member had failed to encounter Jesus in the homeless people who came to worship. He had drawn a circle of those who were in, and it excluded those people who were different. But Jesus breaks away from the human tendency to rank and order people. Jesus invites all of us to the great banquet, and he doesn't give us assigned seats. Marty Haugen recognizes that we do have a difficult time understanding proper banquet etiquette. So he writes, gather us in, the rich and the haughty, the proud and the strong. And that is who we are. By our human nature, we tend to think that we are just a little different than the others. And oftentimes we secretly think we might even be a bit better, wiser, 
or at least on the inside track. That's why Jesus' parable that levels the field of the banquet etiquette makes us uncomfortable. Amen. Let us stand and sing together. We are called hymn number uh, 720 in the ELW. seated. We will now receive the offering, returning a portion of our bounty received from God.
may remain seated during the singing of We Come to the Hungry Feast, ELW 479. seated or kneel for the prayers of the church. <clears throat> With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We give thanks for all in our companion synods, including Karen Anderson in South America and those in Bogota, Colombia, the Central Diocese in Tanzania, Kimumbeo Lutheran in Tanzania, Bogota, Colombia, and the Lofstroms, as well as in our area who spread the name of Jesus, including United Walters, United Lutheran in Walters, Trinity Lutheran in Keister, and St. Michael Lutheran in Waltham. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in the service, including J.B. Wilner, Jared Detloff, Danielle Hipper, Jared Billings, Alex Raymaker, Mitch Meyer, Joshua Kaufman, Keith Latterell, Cole Wenzel, Mike Kaufman, Joshua Hansen, Logan Manicola, Brandon Ressler, Kevin Stern, Eric Trepto, Mike Mall, and Ernie Quesada. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O wise and wonderful God, continually turn the hearts of your people back to you. Mold the church to be your gracious, merciful, and righteous presence in the world as we fill all banquet tables with the bounty that you raise up in your creation. Feed all people with food that will sustain them, even as you feed them with your compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit of humility to the halls of legislation, governance, and justice in every land. Stir up in leaders and citizens a will to serve, and let your peace reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise up people who will extend your hospitality to those in prisons, in hospitals, and in situations of abuse. Give to all who suffer your lasting comfort. Shannon Royce, Stu Fullerton, Caroline Taji, Jan Helfritz, Bill Niebuhr, Clarice Johnson, and those we name silently in our hearts. Where there is despair, bring hope. Where there is illness, bring health. Where there is death, bring life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, today we ask your love and guidance for the family of Laker James Block as he is baptized. We encourage all to pray for Laker and his parents, Rachel and Joseph, as they care for 
and model the life of Christian faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire contentment in all who have employment. Help us to care for the unemployed and underemployed. Create new opportunities for all to earn their livelihood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering the saints who pointed us to Christ in the past, we beg for his presence among us today while we long for the day when he will make all things new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O Holy One, we entrust all, of whom, all for whom we pray, confident in your abundant and abiding mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. You may now share the peace with others in the congregation. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God, for the people of God, for the good of the world. The ushers will direct you forward when it is time for you to receive the meal, and uh, we will prepare for that now.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand for God's benediction. The Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord's face shines on you and is gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with favor and grants you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, just a reminder that there is coffee and treats served in the social hall following the service. Sending song is sent forth by God's blessing, ELW hymnal 547.